Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff die has friends. No, really, Jeff has friends. Jeff's friends are on this podcast. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies. Friendship. Welcome back to Jeff Dye's Friendship Podcast, episode 74. Our guest is a hilarious guy that I um, met in New York City, uh, and then I saw at the Moon Tower Comedy Festival. Um, and he is just so, so raw and real and hilarious. Uh, I think you guys are going to love him. I'm obsessed with him. I think he's one of my favorite dudes. Um, he doesn't fit into any box. He is not Republican. He is not a Democrat. He is, he is not your stereotypical gay man. He literally is just his own thing, which is why he's so priceless and so phenomenal and so hilariously uh, himself. Uh, you're gonna love this guy. Uh, Tim Dillon is in the in the Fortress of Solid Dudes. You guys are gonna really enjoy it. Uh, if you guys want to watch this episode, go to Patreon.com backslash Jeff Die. You can watch this, and for a small fee, you get to uh, get first access to watching these episodes. You also get uh, free comedy club tickets to come see me live wherever I'm performing in the world. You get tickets to it. Um, yeah, if you're listening to this podcast, or any other podcast for that, uh, for that matter, subscribe, rate, and review. That helps all podcasts, and we would really, really appreciate it. Um, without any more stalling, Without any more breaks, even if it was for a sponsor, enjoy Tim Dillon. And we're in. Okay. I feel like, just from what I know of your comedy, and know of you on the internet, and know of you just yeah. being in my kitchen for 30 <laughs> seconds, yeah. I could talk to you for hours. You're a real comedian. I'm a talker. Me That's too. what I do. That's what I offer. Yeah. You know, but I feel like you're easy to talk to, and also there's there's no boundaries. I think people know that when they start talking, you're like, oh, I could I could say anything. This Good way. talking can't have boundaries, right? Good talking has to be just the the best friends I've had in life have been people that you could talk about anything with, yeah, and you could really say anything to. That's why comics are good to talk to, yeah, because we're like some ah. of them, well, some <laughs> yeah, of yeah, them. That's true. The Let's w- rein that in. <laughs> Let's. Yeah. St- I know that you're very friendly and his friendship and love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's, let's refocus it. Keep some honesty. Let's maybe refocus it yeah, for the yeah. day. Well, comics in general, even if I say something horrific, you know, they they will go. He's going for a laugh, or like he, yeah. you know. Whereas, like, if it was just, let's say, someone I was hanging out with, and then all their friends, they might hear that and go, "Jesus, what's his problem?" So you many know? people don't have a sense of humor. Right. Or their sense of humor is like very specific. They don't. There's a lot of people that don't get dark humor, or right. uh, you know, yeah. subversive humor, cynical yeah. stuff, and people don't get it. And then people don't understand. Like they don't understand why anything dark or painful would ever be funny. Why would you ever try to make something funny? <laughs> it's bad. Yeah. The yeah. answer is bad. Yeah. Why would you? Right. So those people are kind of unreachable. You know, I mean, because they're, they're just no fun at all to be around. Not a lot of fun. for me. No, they're not a lot of fun. I, I love making fun of shit that is dark and fucked up. And that's my whole thing. And also, I think a lot of parody has been lost. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you'll say something that's clearly like, oh, the person in that joke is calling someone a faggot. And I think that's right. wrong. Right. But all they heard was faggot. And people you're like, don't no, listen. No, no, the person in, I was condemning that word. Yeah. And the person is a whatever for using that yeah. word. Yeah. But yeah. all you heard was the word, and you're mad at me for saying, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. It's, it's tricky. Um, you know, it's like a minefield. You just gotta, you gotta, you know, just, just unapologetically, you know, do what you want. Where, so I know you're from New York. What part yeah. of New York? How'd this happen? Um, <laughs> how did this become you? Um, well, I mean, my parents took me to Wendy's a lot, which was unfortunate. Uh, uh, baby delicious. boomers fed me poison. 
Uh, oh, you mean like how did this happen? Like how did comedy happen? No, I want to hear about you. So you you grew yeah. up in what part of New York City? I grew up in Long Island, New York, nice. which is not a part of New York City. It is an island uh, about 45, let's say about an hour away okay. from Manhattan. Um, and, uh, I lived in a small town, which was like on the water, the beaches in my town. It was Fancy. actually a little bit like a mob town. Ooh. The guy who the Sopranos is based off of, uh, he lived in my town. A guy who ran a Jersey family, the Cavalcanti family in Jersey, he ran it from the suburb in Long Island where I lived. Uh, the, some of the guys from Goodfellas lived in the town. Henry nice. Hill lived in the town. So it was like an Italian town. We had the San Gennaro Festival. Connected. Yeah, I mean, it was like you grew up, like, there was a lot of bars in the town. Uh, so it was kind of, it had that energy yeah. of like a small town where people kind of looked after each other to an extent, kept their mouth shut. Great drugs, great cocaine, great, great, great baked clams, <laughs> great, you know what I mean? Yeah. Seafood, drugs. I was doing blow at like 13. You're kidding. Yeah, I don't recommend it, but I mean. That you makes know, a great comedian. I mean, yeah, I, you know. So the, the, that was the town. It was just a real Long Island town. I mean, you know, my friend's father, I got in two boating accidents with him. That's how fun of a guy he was. Uh, <laughs> He's a twice the man Sean Kingston is. I mean, the reality is no one's fun enough now that you would get back on a boat after you had been thrown off a boat really right. like a week ago. Yeah. And uh, his son <laughs> said to me, his son's like, we don't even get on his boat anymore. Why do you do it? And I'm like, this guy is so much fucking fun, man. And then we crash into the piling of a bridge. And then he looked at me and he goes, you got to stop hanging out with me. And I was like, why? He's like, cause I think I'm trying to kill myself. And I was like, I was like oh. 21. I'm like, yeah, okay. Maybe I should get away, yeah. you know, but, but a fun guy. Yeah. yeah it's a wild it's to a be around. So that was like, yeah. Chuckles, a lot of chuckles in yeah, there. Yeah. That was like that. The, that was the town I grew up in. And then I was like an actor from when I was six years old to when I was like 12. Okay. And I was like on Sesame street and I would go into the city. Holy shit. And, yeah. No, it's an iconic program. And <laughs> yeah. uh, also I that I, age I to have like it. that idea that I can be on a thing. Yeah. Most people don't put that together till later. And some people never put it together, but yeah, they forget those are regular people. People who pursued that as Absolutely. a as I, a job. I wouldn't call myself regular, but I get what you mean. Uh, uh, no, I was like you know I was a, 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 a narcissist <laughs> little guy that wanted yeah. to be on television. How That's many great. how many kids that were on Sesame Street did blow at thirteen? Do you think? Uh, uh, probably a lot. <laughs> but you were on Sesame be Street before the blow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, before the blow. Yeah. I got out it's of hard on those streets. Man. Yeah, <laughs> it's tough, man. I, you thought it, when you get into uh, acting, you think it's going to work out. Yeah, you know, especially as a child actor, like oh, I'll become Jonathan Taylor Thomas. I'll be one of those kids on TV, and that never happened. Right, and I never got that. I never got that like big commercial where you make fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. So what happened was I ended up on this tour around the East Coast of the United States. Uh, for like a show called Annie Get Your Gun. It was like some Broadway show and they toured it around the country and it was rough. I was, you know, I was in a, a bus eight or nine hours a day and then we perform every night Jeebus. at a different, and then I would stay at like a hotel. With your parents? With my mom. Okay. And then you're like, I, I remember eventually like having a realization like, oh, this is what it really is. Like, mm. this is not. This is not what you think it's going to yeah, be. Yeah. You know, it's like the same thing when you're at whatever club and you're like, but I thought this would be Steve different. Steve Martin's at Madison Square Garden. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're at just, Giggles. You know, you're sitting in the back of a club and you're watching, you know, waitresses with neck tattoos <laughs> clean <laughs> off tables with like raw ammonia, you yeah. know, their skin's falling off. And you're like, oh, this this is what it is. Right. So about after that tour, uh, I quit and I started drugs, which I did from 12 to 25. Nice. Yeah. No more drugs. No, nine years, nothing. Nine years, no nothing. No booze, no drugs. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, about eight years, eight, eight and a half, nine years, yeah. yeah. See, now, so then this will be a really touchy subject for you. That's probably so, not. <laughs> yeah. Well, just because I I'm like not. so pro, I somehow romanticize with these, with the, the fun guy thing you were just talking about. Yeah. All my heroes were psychopaths. Yeah. Or just like drunks or cowboys. You know, like yeah, they're, they're yeah, kind of yeah. like um, the Tom Waits where you like have the whiskey yeah, and you're like, of course. maybe I'm just going to punch someone in the side of the head right now. <laughs> yeah. And and, the, and then the next day you wake up with like a, in a sling with a black eye and you're like, what? Last night was wild though. What a story. Yeah. Or Hey, we robbed that sports bar and we stole right. that football player's shit. You know, yeah. I really enjoy those memories and those stories and those kind of things. So that's why I drink every night and why I look for trouble and why I like yeah. those kind of things. But there's this wave, especially in our business, because like 
uh, growing up, the people that I'm talking about were stand up comedians yeah. or pro wrestlers who, like, you hear their road stories and it's like insane. Yeah. So now it's kind of shifted. Like the Nikki Glazers and the Jim Nortons and the Joe Rogans and the, they don't do that. They're no. talking about CrossFit and going to bed on time and not drinking. And <laughs> it doesn't seem like that's a life I want. I want to well, you fuck know, shit up. A, a lot of people <laughs> drop dead. Yes. You know, so I think that's been the thing. Like, look right. at how many talented people have died. And uh, I think that hard living. I also think, man, it just it runs its course. Okay. It's just like one of those things where it's like you can't be the guy in the bar. You look very young. I don't know your age. I'm 36. Okay, but you look very young. So you can get away with it. But you don't want to be the guy in the bar at 40. Okay. If you look 40, you might be able to still look, you know, whatever, in your late 20s. But you don't want to be that guy. I mean, David Tell said that once. He goes, I'm quitting drinking. I don't want to be the old guy at the bar. There's just a time to live like that, and there's a time to not live like that. Okay. Unless you want to just flame out. Right. And die. (laughs) You know what I mean? Right. I mean, that because you, the, the romanticism of that only you know, exists before you know what the costs are. Okay. When you figure out what the costs are, you're like, ah, yeah, this guy is so fun to be around, but he's, you know, has no family and he's lonely and he's just fun at that bar. And then, you know, he wakes up every day with a pounding headache and he's got no, you know, he's admired in debt and he has a job he hates or whatever. And that pirate life is just not what you want to do, you know, Forever. That makes sense. You can be, you know, like, listen, Rogan walks into a fucking arena with 13,000 people there to see him. What drug competes with that? None. Yeah, yeah, What drug competes with that, right? What drug competes with the type of things that people are able to do? Like, you know, I did his podcast and it was really awesome. And what I was, you know, one of my friends said to me, he's like, man, it's, it's, it sucks that you can't just smoke weed. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to. This was a cool thing. Uh, why would I want to not be present sure. for that? Absolutely. Why would I want to be high when I walk out onto a club to headline and remember how long it took me to get good enough to do this or whatever? Yeah. I, I I like being present. You know, like sure. you know, like that. That's I think the move. Yeah. You know. Well, and also I guess there could be certain like levels of that. Like, and I think uh, you'll probably get married eventually. You'll have kids. I mean, all those things will happen. Hey, don't put that on me, man. Well, I mean, listen, you got to do it. You I'll gotta never, do it. ever do that you shit. Gotta, let me tell you, you got to do gotta. it. And a lot of people who don't do it, let me tell you right now, you see them later in life, it's a mistake. Yeah, it's that a, is dude, true. It's a big mistake. Uh, it's a nightmare. And you're, you're, you, can get a, you can get married at 45 and have kids. doesn't matter. But yeah. uh, a lot of women have that biological reality of, right. of, of, you know, and the reality is, man, man, if you don't have kids, fuck, do you better be successful? I will be you successful be- <laughs> no, but I mean, because I don't I'm, have kids. I mean, you bet yeah. because, you know, to fill that void, it's kind of like you better have a real fascinating career. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that that, uh, but I mean, you don't have kids. No, but there's no void there. No, there will be a void, you especially so? for for a heterosexual guy. Yeah, to not get married and have kids is a big mistake. You'll destroy really? your life. I thought you'll you'd destroy your life. I thought no, you were no, being no, silly. I started I'm laughing. I'm serious. I don't want. I don't, don't want to ruin <laughs> I was like, your he's doing a parody thing. You know? No, no, yeah. you'll, you'll absolutely destroy your life. Well, think about this, Jeff. I, I mean, without, 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 without any. <laughs> that is not what I expected Tim Dillon to tell me. No, I mean it's he a makes fact. He makes an absolute fact. We talk about this. You like your freedom. That's a big part of your big part of your you know your bachelor lifestyle. But when you're sixty. Five. Yeah. You're not going Fuck out with it. the boy. Dude, 45. You're not going out with the boys anymore, maybe. You know right. what I mean? You right. want so, kids. So then, you would be a great so dad. Then what, See, Jeff? this is the thing. I can tell already you'd be <laughs> a great- You're a lonely guy. You'd be a great dad. You'd be- you What know, happens then? <laughs> no, you guys you don't want a kid. <laughs> you don't want a kid to take to some bullshit wrestling thing. <laughs> nah, really? I'm the kid because he'll want to no, take. He'll want to take my kid. That's I mean, listen, you're thing. free to make it. It's your life. It's right. just, yeah. You will. You will. You will have a horrific and meaningless existence. Here's the thing. I, I, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to be. I'm not trying to be a dick, but you'll absolutely ruin your life. It'll be a nightmare. Yeah. I mean, it'll, it'll be, be a nightmare. Yeah. Here's Every, the thing. I mean, just I know me pretty good, and uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid that I will have a kid, yeah, and then 
panic and be a deadbeat dad who just leaves. That's every, and then everyone's tries, fear. And then tries to come back like a year later. That's every single like, person's and then, fear. But I've done it to every girl in my life. I've done it to everything. You just got to break that cycle. Listen, everybody's afraid that they're not going to be the, the, the dad they should be. Or they're not going to be the mom they yeah. should be. But if you run from that, what the fuck do you do? Right. I mean, what do you do? Play video games so you're 80? I mean, it's right. just... That's my plan. It's just the reality <laughs> is... You gotta and accept Christ. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going like, to see how minute. far we'll go. I knew we were and going vote there. for Donald Trump. No. Um, but I mean, whatever. I mean, it is what it is. I just, I look at people with, I've never seen happier people than, and I know that, you know, the, obviously marriages suck and people, there's a lot of pressure, but there's something weird about single people without kids once you get to a certain age. There's something uneasy about them. And there's something, I heard this thing where, uh, people that work in nursing homes or people that have had kids die, they're a lot more at ease mm -hmm. because they've done what they've came, came to earth to do. Sure. And when people don't have kids and they don't have a family around them, when they die, it's very weird and very strange. Anyway, something to think about. <laughs> Long Island, uh, you know, a lot of seafood, a lot of drugs, Street. a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Wait, so uh, during your acting journey, right? You yeah. said that was a while and then you got into drugs for a little bit, but that was probably, there's probably some overlap there. When did you, when did stand up comedy start? 25. 25 years old 25 late i'm 34 now 25 yeah. uh i was in mortgages they fell apart we all know financial crisis 2009 i was still trying to sell them i was in this dilapidated office building with nine other losers you know society's throwaways you know thinking that the market was going to come back we're all going to make money it was an absolute nightmare i got a summons to be on jury duty uh, for a trial, murder, torture, rape trial. Oof, it was the nice. best experience of my life. Uh, it was really great. It was it, you, I, did, I couldn't afford like going on a retreat. Like, you know, some of these people go on <laughs> silent retreats. Yeah. So the idea that you could just sit back and really relax and sit in judgment of another human being who's clearly guilty. <laughs> yeah. He seemed guilty. I don't know. I didn't pay super close attention. Um, but just I, just didn't, I just didn't like his face. His yeah. eyes were very close. And, um, murder on his face. Yeah, and and uh, it was just two weeks, and they talk about mortality every day. Okay, he stabbed her in each eye. It was wild. Oh my um, God. Yeah, it was bad. It was Ooh. really bad, you know? Yucky. And uh, life plus 50 years, no possibility of parole. And he kind of liked me, which was sad because I would like drop Altoids and sometimes I'd eat potato chips and like everybody would look at me and the, and then he would kind of look at me like, oh, we got a cut up. This guy's a clown. <laughs> that is fun. You know, it was a good time. I mean, I would just eat potato chips while the, the coroner was on or the medical examiner talking about... There were so many lacerations, we can't tell you how many stab wounds there were, and you'd hear, <laughs> <laughs> and so this guy would love it, because he's a sociopath, and he'd be like, <laughs> and I'd look at him and throw my arms up, like, hey, what are you going to do? You gotta eat. Gotta eat, fun, you know, not anymore, keto kid, but yeah. back then, gotta eat, and uh, it was fun, and when I came in to deliver the verdict, I had to kind of look at him and be like, Ew. you know, I don't, this, these fuckers, you know? <laughs> But after that, after that experience, I kind of said to myself, I'm going to go and do something I really want to do instead of just wasting my life. Uh, and I, all of those crazy things. Uh, I came out of the closet that m two a month later, I stopped doing drugs and alcohol and I started comedy in the same exact Good night. frame. So it was this weird shift. And then I just dedicated myself a hundred percent to comedy moved to New York city and ended up, it ended up doing being okay and being good. But that's that was a crazy, that's a, a yeah. huge, big life change. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was a big life change. You went just and somebody had to die for that change to happen. <laughs> somebody had to get stabbed repeatedly. Uh, and I have no problem with that because I think I have a great show and if people come out on the road to see me, they'll have a really good time. And frankly, I don't know how funny that bitch was, but probably not. <laughs> And the just reality. I'm so I'm sorry about it. I didn't do it. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, this was what really the catalyst had for to me. Have Sacrifices to go had to be made. And do write some really great bits about ice cream and stuff. Some people got to die. Hey, ain't that the truth? <laughs> That's part of it. She had two kids. Sad. Yeah. Well, oh. did the murderer have kids? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, he oh, might have. He seemed like a guy who didn't have kids. No, I would imagine he had a kid or two he might not have known about. I don't know. He didn't yeah, yeah. seem super responsible. <laughs> you know, like, I feel like he probably, I think he had kids with her. I, like that he I liked think he had you. two kids with her and then he killed her. He oh. liked you. Yeah, he had two kids. Oh, he loved me. You even won over the he murder. I'm a likable guy <laughs> and I'm not here to really judge everybody. Yeah. 
Um, Except you kind of were there that day. No, not It was everybody. my job. Yeah. It was my job. I wasn't invested <laughs> in it on an emotional $8 level. Sure. a day. He has $40 to. $40 a day. Oh, not bad. Yeah, that's right. Nassau County. We got that money. <laughs> and uh, it was a great time. I really enjoyed it. And all the people in the jury box were like, you're so funny. We hear the mo- the, ho- the worst shit every day, but you make it really funny. You should do stand up. And I, I'd always kind of wanted to do it, but I was just a pussy. And <laughs> sitting through that trial and. Seeing how brave, like, some of these people were that came up and were testifying and shit. And then, like, the prosecutor was just good at her job. She was just killer. And her closing statement was so good that this guy stood up and he's like, I didn't do this crime in the middle, <laughs> in the middle of it. Yeah. He tried to heckle. He <laughs> said, I didn't do this crime, which is like, we all looked at him. We're like, oh, this was a... <laughs> Flaw. This yeah. was an error. Yeah. This was a miscalculation. To just a little shout. defensive. There. But she was so good, man. I mean, she there were, there were tears in the jury's eyes. I oh mean, she was God. really, really good. And I was just like, man, she's meant to do this. Yeah. She's meant to be doing what she's doing. I'm not meant to sell mortgages in a strip mall. I got to go out and be funny because that's the thing that I enjoy. Yeah, yeah. And you are hilarious. I well, think I appreciate that. Every day, the little the videos that you post on <laughs> yeah. Twitter. Yeah. And I call them little because I'm looking at them on my con- t- my Twitter on my phone. Yeah. And I also, appreciate you like retweeting shit. Short. I appreciate that. And uh, well, they're like a minute. They're like a minute. It's a quick I don't like when minute. people go, "Oh, you still doing your little stand up thing?" That's a big pet peeve of mine. And right. then I kind of did it when I said your little videos. No, they're little, but, but they got to be little now because they're. People's attention so span right funny. now is like boom, like you're online at Chipotle between meat and guacamole. I gotta get you a minute, dude. It's yeah. so funny. I gotta get you a minute before they're like, it's extra, and you're like, I know it is. <laughs> we all know. Yeah. Uh, but, but between those two stations, yeah. you gotta get the minute in. It's so funny. And, I, I'll find yeah. myself laughing like out loud, well, which is in places. It. Very good. I appreciate stuff. it, man. How do you decide what you're going to do? So when I started coming out to LA about a year and a half ago, I met this kid named Ben, and Ben was like a drunk. And a uh, skinny kid from Texas, but like a, you know, drank a lot. And I recognized myself in him, not, not body type, but other things, <laughs> like other things drinking wise. And I did a show with him and he was like hammered. And I'm like, oh, this is a bad scene. And then the next time I came back to LA, I needed somewhere to record a podcast. He texted me, he said, hey, I have a studio. And he's like, listen, I'm like three weeks sober. And I'm like, really good. So we started to become friends. And he, you know, now he's like sober a year and a half. Nice. And I watched his life change dramatically the way my life changed and everything. And like, I, when I came to LA, I would stay with him. And, you know, there's not enough spots in LA to just do stand up. So one night it was like three or four o'clock in the morning. We were just sitting downstairs watching, you know, you know, God only knows some, you know, some, you know, Nazi on YouTube or something or whatever, <laughs> whatever you watch, you know, yeah. uh, some nine eleven documentary, a conspiracy documentary or whatever, Big whatever we're you. doing. Right. <laughs> and he goes, he's got a desk in his, so he goes, why don't you sit behind this desk? And I don't even smoke cigarettes, but he's like, it would be hilarious if you just sat on this desk with a cigarette and just started ranting. And we did it. It was the first video I did. And I just did this rant and I, I i don't know what it was about it was it was all kinds of things and then uh we just start, oh, it was about roseanne roseanne had just gotten fired so i was oh, like yeah. give me the money i'll make roseanne <laughs> i'm like what is roseanne even about she's fat and she eats dinner that's every episode <laughs> of roseanne they just eat dinner yeah. and everyone's like it's about the working class i'm like they're eating hot dogs every night yeah. i've never seen them work i've seen her walk around a diner yeah, that is not rich like that's she the- kind of works so i was like i'll do it like, I'll be racist and eat dinner. I don't care. <laughs> and I did this, and people really liked it. And then then I, every time I came to L.A., I just started doing them and sit behind the desk. And then they got crazier and crazier. People liked it, and then they just got crazy. We took the desk and put it in front of Jollibee. We took it and we put it on a hill. I put a wig on and said I was Megan McCain. <laughs> it was we one took, of my favorites. Yeah, we took it and we put it in front of the pink wall. I just did one where I, I dress up like a guy that goes to uh, uh, Burning Man, and he works for ICE, you know, the immigration. <laughs> And basically, the, the, the whole the whole the whole thing is that the security guard one was good too. Yeah, so the, right, the Epstein security guard. So it's just like just the whole thing is like a guy, a guy that like works for ICE, <laughs> but is at Burning Man. So it's like wild. They won't be able to hear it, but that is legendary. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like, so those are a lot of fun. And listen, man, they're just, they're just, so how do we decide? We just look at what's in the news or what's going on mm-hmm. and 
We're like, what can we have a funny take about? You know, like what what could be funny? What are people searching? And then also yeah. that you don't burn no material that way out oh, of your absolutely. act or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, I, I, I like that, man. I just don't like stand. Like I know people do stand up clips and they work really well for yeah. people. I personally, I really only like stand up live. Like yeah. I, my true stand up fans want to see it live. I mean, I get you got to do specials. I get you know I've done two of them. I don't love the like right. the Netflix thing I did, Comedy Central thing I did. I look at them. I'm like, they're good. They're fine, but. They're not nearly what they people are. People don't live. connect with any of them. Yeah, and they're all factory produced. And I you mean, know how many times yeah. I've heard people go, "Hey, you know, we watched a special the other night. It wasn't that funny." They love saying that. They love yeah. going, "Oh, I didn't really enjoy it that much." And they're like, "Who was it?" And they're like, "Oh, it was uh, such such." And it's usually like someone I really look up to, yeah, or someone right. I'm friends with. And yeah. I go, "I promise you, no matter how you felt about that, uh, you're wrong. They're very funny." They're very funny people. Yeah, it's just man, they just it didn't doesn't connect. really oh, it doesn't always translate. It rarely does. And like these are factory produced specials. Like they bring an audience in, they're like, "All right, here's 200 desperate people that don't have a place to go tonight. <laughs> uh, sit down. Here's one drink. You can't get any more drinks. Please also don't go to the bathroom. Also, you're being filmed, so don't move too much." Ugh. You know? It's weird, and then it's a factory produced thing where they're like, and next comic, boom, and next comic, and next comic. And it's really just not conducive to anyone fucking doing well. It's also not what we do every night. It's no. just, yeah, like the, it's like trying to do something so different than what we've trained for. Yeah, Matt, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. Yeah, you I know? don't like it. The uh, so the, but these you can do anything you want, and also you don't have to worry about like a network. Imagine if you try yeah, to do it would these slow like me at down. a network. It would slow me. Down. I have a lot of meetings. People will because they see these. Yeah. I have a lot of meetings. People go out for lunch. You know, I sit down with people. I sell ho ha. Oh, you're a fan. That's sweet. I grew up in Long Island. Oh, where did you go? Okay, what did you do? Oh, good. You're working with Run DMC on a thing about good. Oh, Wu Tang Clan's writing a thing. Good, good for them, and I hope it's good. And oh, you did the roast of. Snoop and uh, lovely and Martha Stewart has a thing on TikTok. You're working with her. Great. Uh, and <laughs> all of these people want to make this shit into a show. Sure. But the reality is I'm not going to be able to say what I want to say. Yep. They're going to slow me the fuck down. Yeah. Nobody's watching TV. I'm getting a lot more fans TV's online. TV's dead. Dead. And dead. also like. But these people have so much money invested in it and it's still paying dividends. You know, do what you're doing. They don't, you know, so I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah, I and think. also you can make money off Patreon and of make course. money off YouTube. Yeah, and stuff we like started that. one and we're like, we started one a few days ago and we're like 4000 a month. You yeah, know? The and problem so with, it's got to grow. And Or I don't know if it's a problem, but one of the reasons TV's dying is because think about Jackass, right? Yeah. Jackass was doing some wild shit. Funny shit. Really good stuff. That's yeah. why we liked it. And yeah. maybe it was just because our age group, but like we were at an age where we're like, dude, have you seen what these guys are doing? These yeah. guys are what? And now. TV has gotten so soft, they can't do all this stuff. They're like, oh, what if so what if a kid tries that and his arm falls right. off or something? Right. They're going to sue the TV set, so we can't do So you can't- If a kid tries it, you know they're watching. <laughs> right. You know they're watching the <laughs> yeah. show. Yeah. Okay? But you can't do something that's not as extreme as 15 years ago now. Well, here's the other thing they don't realize. They're competing with Trump and they're losing. Trump won because he got out there and said, I'm going to say whatever the fuck I want. Right. And you're fighting him by increasing censorship. Bad move. Absolutely. Bad move. Yeah. You're fighting this guy who decided that he was going to win literally by going outside the box in terms of what acceptable political discourse was. You got to fight that. You got to fight fire with fire. You got to program Find someone things. over there, yeah. You know, don't make an entertainment business that to most people is pathetic. Don't have Trump be funnier than most comedians, which he is. Yeah. <laughs> don't have a situation where everything you do is so weak and so soft that people have no other, you know, choice but to go online. And a lot of these guys start looking for humor and then they fall down these like weird alt-right rabbit hole. Right. But because they were like, listen, everything sucks. Everything mainstream sucks. That's true. So then you start like laughing about something and then all of a sudden you're, you know, reading books about the shapes of skulls and race <laughs> realism and Jews and you're like, how yeah. did this happen? <laughs> I just wanted to laugh. <laughs> so it's like, make fun of your shit. Yeah, because it's like, you know? And, and also, it can't be soft, softer than it was. What do you think about the incels? Because you're a guy that probably fucks all the time. What is, what the, is incels? You don't know what incels are? I don't know what are? the hell that is. So incels are these involuntarily celibate guys that are shooting up schools that are very angry. Oh, they, have, yeah, yeah. they have all these chat rooms. They have all these message boards. They're like... They can't get laid. What do you think it is? Why are dudes, why are there so many young, angry dudes? 
Uh, I think it's just hard to be a teenager. Like, yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. think it was like, remember that? Doug Stanhope talks about it. He's like, right. you wonder why teenagers are like little assholes. They, yeah. They're not allowed to smoke. They're not allowed to drink. They right. can't leave. They, they're they dependent on their parents that yeah. don't even fucking like them. They, can, yeah. they they don't have any money to go do any of the things they want. Right. And that's why, at least our age, I was blowing up mailboxes and like fucking really? with the neighbors well, and like, doing shit like that. You know, that's... Yeah, because that's all I had access to. I was yeah. like, you know, I, I there was nobody offering me sex. Like, no, like I didn't have sex right. until I was 21. Wow. Yeah. I was a very late bloomer and so like I just made up for it probably looking <laughs> trying to yeah yeah I'm catching up uh, but like that's the thing is like, I did a club at Zanies and they go oh Jeff Dye was here last week and they were like his fan base a lot of hot chicks and he just took everyone out after the show and like went to a bar and like party with them I'm like well this weekend's gonna be different <laughs> it's gonna be a little different so prepare for that <laughs> Okay. Um, and uh, so it was just a little, it was nice. They got a break from the partying and the hotness <laughs> yeah. for a while. And I was like, this is going to be a different show. Sometimes it gets a little overwhelming. It's going to be a different show. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we should go on tour together. That would be hilarious. It would be very interesting. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Do you you bring out a lot of, like, is it a lot of hot chicks? Or is it uh, it's all uh, women and gay guys. Okay, That's like my demo. Um, yeah. But I do a show with old I'm guys. all straight dudes. All 88% straight guys. Really? I have the same demos like Rogan and Shout, like very similar demos. Interesting. Uh, not, not in the sense that everybody like is fitness minded, but it's a lot of straight dudes. Okay. And it's a lot of people that want dark stuff. Yeah. They I don't think, feel um, that they connect to like, I guess, you know, mainstream stuff. Yeah, I'm trying to get out of the mainstream stuff. I worked yeah. so hard to be that, being like, oh, I know I'm Mr. Tonight Show, and I'm Mr. I mean, you're a classic fit for that, and, like and in terms w- of Tonight Show. And it worked, and they were yeah. like, oh, this guy's, you know, he's doing funny stuff about a yeah. bird on a plane. Like, that that right. works for the Tonight Show. Put him on. And then the more I've lived or the older I get, the more I realize, like, uh, there's a place for that, and that's yeah. fine. There's nothing against that. But also, like... What plays on the internet is when people go, I like, like, that's what they share is when they go, no, this guy's fucking being truthful. He's being like, uh, I don't know if that's Yeah, the I right- mean, that, that to me is what I like. I like to say things where people go, oh, ah, that, no, can you say that? Or, sure. And I'm like, you can, because it's funny. So to me, the, the cool things to say are the ones I can get away with it if it's funny. Right. That's what I like about comedy. It's like, oh, getting so funny, you could say certain things and make certain observations that you, you would have with your friends. You, you talk to your boys and you're like, this sucks and that sucks and- Look at this fucking per and but the way you do it is be very funny. Yeah, you know but, yeah, that's yeah. Be have a good take. I love like Letterman. I loved all the mainstream shit growing up. I loved SNL. I don't know what happened. Right. I don't know if they changed, if I changed, but now I can't watch Fallon because he's he's doing uh, a song with Miss Piggy. He's playing checkers with Cameron Diaz. I mean, I don't know what is happening. <laughs> I literally don't right. know what's happening. Yeah, you know it'll be like. You know, it's like the Amazon rainforest is on fire, and now here's Jimmy with the Muppets, and they're all singing. I'm like, <laughs> what is this? Yes. Opioid crisis. Parents barricading themselves in bathrooms because their kids are stealing their pain medication. Story uh, tomorrow on the morning news, but first, here's Jimmy Fallon with Zach Efron playing Twister. <laughs> I'm like, what is ha- what? That's so yeah. true. Who is this for? Fat housewives from Galveston, Texas, right? Whose husband sit in a car drinking with a gun, and this woman sitting there <laughs> eating Halo Top ice cream. She's on her fifth, you know, thing of it, <laughs> yeah. which I think at some point has an equalizing effect. Sure. <laughs> and she's watching Jimmy. I mean, that's that. When I was a tour guide in New York, I was a tour guide on a double decker bus. The only people who cared about where the Tonight Show was were chubby women from like. Ohio <laughs> that were like where's Jimmy where's Matt Lauer where's Matt it's like who gives a shit <laughs> yeah. oh you know? that is so funny to me I think that might have been their plan though is that like since everybody's doing politics yeah because like the Colbert show and the Daily Show they're and, all horrible uh, they're all, all those kind of things went so political yeah that they're like let's just get Jimmy out there singing with Selena Gomez yeah, but it's like, some, let's like weird... do something non-political but funny right, right that's true that would be cool too not as like candy corn kind of like well it doesn't reflect the world we live in that's why nobody watches it okay not not my age yeah. like the older people do the world that exists and the and the and the they're not even satirizing a world that exists on right. the Tonight Show I don't yeah. even know what they're trying to make fun of I don't know but either. it's not a world that's here and now it's like this is something else do you think that if you had your own late night format yeah um would you be able to do all that stuff without being I mean you could be political but yeah. how would you make something that isn't political that's still funny 
I would do everything I'm doing right now. Yeah. Like all those videos, I would do all kinds of stuff like that. Well, because the Clinton one was pretty, that's political. Yeah, but you, and I, then you I don't got think the, you have uh, to not be political. You just have to be funny. Right, that's the rule. Yeah, so I don't think you have to not be political. I mean, well, Stephen Colbert is, was very funny. He's no longer funny because every single take, you know who the target of the joke is. Sure. You know it's going to be about Trump. You know he doesn't like Trump. You know it's going to be about how bad Trump is and how bad Republicans are and how great it's a, Democrats it's very and liberals are. Yeah, yeah. It's very predictable, dude. Not that you take that ingredient out of humor, the surprise or the shock or the yeah. And once that's done, then what are we fucking doing? Now you're giving a speech, giving well, a talk, exactly. And that's my biggest pet peeve with stand up comedy and what it's become is that like um, they've lo- they've not even looking for the joke anymore. They're not even looking for comedy anymore. Yeah, like that's why Ellen isn't funny anymore. I think stand up's kind of dying. Like I think stand up eventually. Think right. You know, I I think it's just the rigidity of stand up. The 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 joke structure is really great and it's impressive. But I think when you have a president who's just fucking free balling, and I think he's just saying whatever he wants and he's just going off the dome and he's riffing, I think what's more authentic to people right now is a podcaster, a, a live stream or a video or something that just feels raw and authentic. Yeah. And I think people want to get to know you. And I think if your stand up's a vehicle for people to get to know you, then great. But if it's just jokes, there'll always be there'll always be that thing, like Joe, like very rigid, tightly, you know. But are, are you really gonna connect with people on a deep level with only that i don't know i don't know man right. i mean jazz was a huge thing too people used to go out to see plays i don't know what to tell you i well, mean shit ends you i know? think yeah. ellen has stopped being funny to me because she's become too good of a person she's so i mean sweet. ellen is actually a nightmare in real life she's a oh, demon really? yeah everyone okay, that works well, then, for like, her for example everyone that works for her i know people that work for her i mean she makes them cry she's an oh, absolute really? i mean she's a satanist okay then forget absolute that she's horrible. a good person but like <laughs> uh, the yeah. last time i saw her do like an interview or something she was like tearing and crying about how like yeah, it's fake sad being a the sociopath. world is yeah it's sociopathy. and i was like well this isn't funny that's not what right. people liked about you we liked that you were like it's also pretend it's also not real interesting it's also pretend because yeah. she's a sociopath <laughs> and what happens when people are uh have have disassociated uh and it, you make a lot of money doing that but people know if it was real the re- your aversion to it is not because it's not funny right it's because it's not real it's not sincere, and yeah. whether you can whether you're even processing it that way or not you have a guttural instinctual reaction to knowing that she's actually full of shit sure that's why you don't like it interesting that's what it is well, the stand-up because scene, you don't need to be funny all the time if you're authentic. Right, that She's makes sense. She's not authentic. That makes sense. It's the reality. Well, like Chappelle, like he just did this great special. every fucking minute. Right. And then right. They, they're like, oh, well, this is a, uh, oh, you, you don't even have to watch this special because he doubles yeah, down. But it's, you know, like, who is it? Three writers in Brooklyn? About? Yeah. yeah, exactly. No one cares. Like, this is the thing. And National Review wrote some dumb art. No one cares about that That made that me shit. immediately want to go watch it. Yeah. Because right. I was like, I was like, fake wokeness. No, exactly. Trying to get I was like, no one cares. Yeah. Nobody has any... It, he's authentic. People like him. That's really the test. We're we're heading into this weird time, where you almost can't. You can lie, but like people sniff it out, man. People have a guttural, instinctual reaction to if you are full of shit or not. Sure. And that is, I think, becoming the thing when you when you see people that are succeeding or connecting with people. A lot of it is because they're being who they fucking are. Sure. Unless they have a machine behind them. See, if you have a, the big Hollywood machine behind you, you're you don't even know who you are. You've never met a lot of times, not sure. always, but in certain cases, you've never even met yourself. You're like, I'm a liquid that takes the shape of the container. So yeah. I have ten writers and agents and managers, producers, uh, publicists, PR people, and everybody basically makes and creates me every day sure and then i just do that and those people have the machines but they don't have you know they don't have that organic like oh you got to hear this person yeah absolutely yeah Yeah. what is it that you like i feel like you're so smart like and also like i I don't know about that yeah i mean i i know some very smart people and it's always good to talk to them because i'm like oh yeah i'm a clown (laughs) but i mean in a a, (laughs) yeah i i I can i'm somewhat you know i'm functioning well, what would you want to make if you if someone just dropped a I'd love to make of- what I tried to make with Comedy Central that didn't work. I'd love to make a crazy dark travelogue, you know, about essentially what a travelogue should look and feel like at this climate and time in our history, which would not be like Savannah's got great biscuits. It would be like, yeah. what the hell is going on? <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to make that kind of darkly funny travel show where you just go to places and point cameras at whatever and yeah be honest about what the hell's going on in this fucking 
place and make it really, really funny and interesting. Yeah. And I think, and you could intersperse things like that in between it. Sure. No one cares. I mean, you go to these meetings and people are like, but what's the act for payoff? I'm like, you guys have no clue. I know the reason things, you know, things succeed on the internet without any context. People just have a visceral reaction. They want to watch them. Yeah. So that's what I'd like to make. I, I think the traveler genre is funny, but it's always an advertisement for a place. It's right. always an informal. I'm on one. We that's our that's what we do. Yeah, and that's and that's a great. <laughs> and we listen. show the best like restaurants, and we show the finest things. Right, I'm, and I'm they sure don't you show think the you... stripper in Lithuania who's grind dancing on me, going, "You have no idea, my life is a hell." That, wow, she's that's, trying to be sexy. That's what <laughs> yeah. I want to show. Yeah, that's what I want to see. I want to see what's going on. I want to go to Burning Man. I want to. I want to go to a furry convention. Right. I want to go to, uh, you know, I shot my pilot in Long Island. I went to a beach club in Long Island, and you know, had all the people there. You like, I love like- the Cabana Boys. These women were like, they're like our slaves. I'm like, great. <laughs> These are great. You know, they're like our slave. Like, it was so hilarious to me that like you're just capturing people, and I'm reacting to it. And it's yeah. a lot of fun, and that's the type of show Did that you have, like, I tried to sell a scripted crew? show too. Um, no, we went in with we went in with the you know production company and we did it. Because sometimes that's the problem is like sometimes it starts really authentic. Yeah, and then enough hand like if I say oh I want to get that stripper in Lithuania who's whatever to capture that moment they're they're already in there hours before I get there and they're showing right. up rigging up lights and you've taken away all the authenticity need, of well, that the, moment. What we're gonna realize eventually is that production companies are kind of unless you're making Game of Thrones. A lot of them, you know, having 60 people on a payroll, having 25 of them involved in something is a waste. It's yeah. ridiculous. You know, you want to be light, fast, quick. Uh, you know, you want to be agile. You yeah. want to be able to move around. So I think the future is going to be like you have a crew of dudes, you got a DP, a line producer, whatever, and you're just like, boom, boom, boom. On our show, I literally told, and I'm probably- What is this on? This might show? have you take this out on NBC. Yeah. But I literally was like- I could tell you 10 people who can be fired from the show that would save us so much money. Oh, yeah. And like, because it's just, there's no, and anytime someone. Number one, all of the hosts. <laughs> because yeah, get rid of we all don't really guys. need anybody. I mean, to, no, I'm kidding. No, but I what, love, what happened is yeah. they would literally bring in all these writers. Yeah. But these guys are just going to say whatever they want because right. they're old celebrities and they're not going to like take gags. And it's better. And it's joke better. is way better, way yeah. more authentic. Like Absolutely. You're saying. And I'm a comedian, so I'm, they don't even write anything for me. Right. They just go, oh, Jeff's fine, but we need to give Bill Shatner his lines. Yeah. And Bill doesn't care. Bill's just going to be grumpy Bill. Right. Um, and then the other part that was annoying is like anytime one somebody would complain, like let's say that's in post. Because post is a fuck, right? Like trying to edit stuff yeah. and do all that and put it together. And then you've got to run it through 100 people at NBC who all have notes, even though they have no business making creative decisions. Right. And so what happens is that person finally goes, I can't do this. I've been in edit bay for 15 hours. My husband, I haven't seen my husband. I'm losing my mind and my hair's falling out and I'm stressed. I'm smoking cigarettes. And then they're like, give her an EP credit. So now, right? Yeah, there's like 17 EPs on well, yeah, the well, show. My friend, uh, my friend Michelle is in Looney Tune. She's in her 40s. She's like, she has an Emmy next to her bed, and I'm like, F-. she hasn't worked in 10 years. I'm like, if they give Michelle an Emmy, Emmys are fake. <laughs> and I love Michelle, but she's crazy. Right. She was, she was, she said the funniest thing I've ever heard. Uh, I mean, she's very good friends with me and Big J Okerson. We were all out to lunch with her in New York City, and she goes. She looked at us and very sincerely, she goes, I feel horrible for Harvey Weinstein. And it was the funniest thing I'd ever heard because it was not a, a hint of trying to be funny or irony. She's yeah. like, I feel horrible for Harvey Weinstein. What are they doing to him? What are they doing to him? It was the funniest thing I've ever heard. I that put a fun. photo of Jeffrey Epstein on my Instagram. She had no idea who he was. So she just wrote back, gorgeous. <laughs> So she's just very funny, That's but I'm the like, type of gal she is, yeah. if she has a fucking Insta, I mean, if she has an Emmy, and she has an Emmy for producing a show, The Doctors, you know? What do these so people funny. even do? No one does anything. <laughs> Think about LA, which is great. It's like people really find a hustle and- you I know. think what I like about you is you have a very Ricky Gervaisness that I appreciate. Oh, yeah, per- per- perhaps, yeah. Yeah, and I, I like that. I yeah. feel like there's a- um, to, and you don't hate that lady. You're friends with that lady. I, I live in her house. Also, I live yeah. in her house in West Hollywood. She moved to New York and she's renting me out the house. Oh, and nice. I just I, I live there and it's like yeah, you know, I can walk to the improv close to the store yeah. and it's just like a great spot. Do you think you're gonna live in LA for a long time? I think we're gonna see. I love it right now. I never make yeah, I think for a while. Yeah. I think for a while. I do love New York City. I know. I'm a New York guy. 
I, uh, I the, the energy in New York to me is intoxicating. It really? is. I love it. Yeah. Maybe I just didn't give it a long enough shake. You're just maybe not the dude for it. I, I don't think you're the dude. You're not, you're just not, doesn't well, how suit come you. I can't just be the dude that's not into marriage and kids? You guys are like, no. Nah. Because we we're looking out for you. I actually <laughs> think you'd, if I didn't think you'd be an amazing dad, I probably wouldn't even say that. Okay. I literally have a feeling that you'd actually be a great dad. I love kids. Yeah, no, dude, I you'd be, you, you, I actually think you're going to get married. I mean, I, I don't want to push it, but I, 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 some people tell me they're not going to have kids and I'm like, good, <laughs> yeah. good. Yeah. But I think with you, it's just that it, it would make sense. But yeah, dude, I love New York. This is a chapter of my life though. So I love New York. Me. And dude, here's the other thing. In four or five years, if nothing's going on in LA uh, and I'm making a you know good amount of money just doing everything independently, I can do it from anywhere. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So who the fuck knows? Have you been I mean, all... do I want to sit in traffic for five hours for the rest of my life? You won't have know. to because you're doing whatever the fuck you want. Well, just, that's the know, whole thing. I never so. sit in traffic. People go, oh, LA traffic. I don't sit in traffic. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, but it's annoying. It's annoying. I fly out a lot. I mean, it's just annoying. Yeah. I mean, at, at a certain Burbank's point. Burbank's right down the street. I feel, yeah. I, no, no problems. But at a certain point, I think I'll, I'll make a decision. The people here are very stupid. And that does bother me a little bit. Not a lot. <laughs> yeah. But they're very, very dumb. <laughs> yeah. And there is something nice about being in a place where people think. Sure. And this is not that place. Everybody's kind of like the sunburnt and kind of their brains are sunburnt. <laughs> and I don't have a problem with that per se because this is the way to experience the apocalypse. Like I went into San Diego. I told the audience, this is the way to experience the apocalypse. Just hot and fucking on a surfboard. New York will be trying to solve everything right up until the end. They'll be like, well, actually, if we did it, they well, you know, they'll be on fire being like, you're wrong. Uh, California, they'll just be coming and having fun and because they, you know, they, they are, you know, they're, they're, they're living in what's left of paradise. You know, this is a really yeah. beautiful place and they're, you know, I mean, there's, there's no water and there are tent cities popping up everywhere and, you know, you know, who, I mean, you know, there's, there's violent mass shooting and death. <laughs> But you know, get a poke bowl. We're having get a great a poke bowl. We're having a great time. Get a poke bowl and just relax. <laughs> get a It'll all sort itself out. And that's the attitude here. Um, so I like it right now. It's an adventure. I've never lived anywhere except New York. So this is a huge thing. Have you thought about like moving to like uh, Australia for a month or like uh, England for no. a month? No. No, I don't want to see all that. Don't care. I mean, I'll visit, but yeah. I'm not going to live there for a month. Right. No interest in Edinburgh. Okay. No interest in the Edinburgh Festival where every show description is like- uh, Brutal. You lose money. Watch this. Uh, my uh, Everybody does an hour one-man show, and it's like my experience of being misgendered at a fruit stand. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good on that. Thanks for the offer. I don't want to eat cow stomach and watch people that think they're performing in like Shakespeare's you know, Globe Theater or whatever it's called. Enough. <laughs> Shut up. Go home. Drink yourself to death. Which is what many of them should do. A that lot of that comedy is horrible and it's disgusting and it's horrific. <laughs> that is gold. So I'm happy here. I mean, I like America. I mean, I still do. Even as bad as it gets, I, you know, Australia's a big barbecue. It's worse than California. <laughs> Yeah. What yeah. are those people? They have no, and they have giant spiders. There's nothing. No to, there's nothing to learn in an environment that's just. I mean, there's something. It's very beautiful, and the, I'm sure the people are great. They're great comedy fans. But if I was going to live somewhere to like learn or something, yeah, I would probably. You'd probably have to go to a dangerous place. You'd probably have to go to a a, a state that was functioning, but like barely. Okay. To just see what that is like, to understand it. I have friends that are in the Marines and the Army, or whatever, that have been all over the world. Yeah, their perspectives on everything is so amazing and incredible because they've actually been in societies that are are broken, sure, permanently. So for me, that might which be, sort of yeah. describes. Uh, that's almost like an allegory or a metaphor for. Stand-up comics. Yeah. Like, I think the reason we have a perspective or a uh, um, we're a ability to be laughing about dark things and yeah. seeing that jokes are the medicine for these bad things and, and yeah. having a different take than a regular person is because we got broken at some point or sure. there's some sort of, yeah. you know, there is that in comedy. Yeah, I think huge. I think we're also somewhat perceptive. We notice things people don't notice. Maybe we internalize them. And then we got to make that okay by joking around about it in our own head. And then that, you know, spills out. Yeah. Yeah. When I joke around so much when I'm like at my sister's funeral, like I was like making all these gags and like goofing yeah. off and like playing with them. And I remember people being like, Jesus, man, you know, you can just. Is it recent? Like, 
Uh, it was a few years ago. Wow. And man. I remember, uh, and and I remember people commenting like, "Dude, it's okay." And I was like, "No, this is how I deal with it. This was is it expected, or was it like a, a quick, car accident? So it was quick. Yeah, yeah it was no, crazy. it was awful. Yeah. And but like the, and that's just how I it's how you do cope. it. Yeah. And fuck anyone who tells you that's not how you should do it. Yeah, that's fuck anyone who tells you how you should mourn or how you should grieve. I mean, John Rivers said when her husband killed himself, her and her daughter were out like the next night laughing. And people were looking at her like, what the hell's wrong with you? And she's like, fuck you. Right. You don't own or tell me mm-hmm. how to, you know. Yeah. I, I mean, know. like, I was literally. She's uh, one of those people. I'm like, fuck. I wish we had Patrice right now. I wish we had Joan Rivers right now. I just wish there are certain takes that I want. Yeah. You know? Uh, Patrice now Great. would either be the most. Wild. Uh, revered or yeah. the most underrated comedian. Around. Who knows? But I would just love them, you know, to be around. Where do you stand on a Nick DePaula? He's a great Currently. comedian. I think anytime people wade into politics, man, to that extent, sure, it's just not as funny. Right? It's just not as funny. I think he's a brilliant comedian. On either side, yeah. I yeah. like him as a guy. I don't. I think he's some of his political beliefs. I understand some of them are probably wacky, but when you start acting like Trump, like anybody on any side of the aisle. When you start acting like Trump cares about you or any of these Obama or any of these people care about you, right. to me, you're losing, you got to be detached to, 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 to be a, you know, an, you're, you're an analyst, a comedian, you're an analyst. You're looking at this stuff. You go, how can I pull Colson? How do I make it funny? Yeah, it should be non-biased. Yeah, when you become like a really like insanely idealistic, uh, ideological, your, your like religious, I don't know, it just feels... I think he has a. He should have a place. He's. I'm. I, you know. I'm not one of these people that's like you shouldn't have that perspective. No, I mean, I just love if a no, comic. I just, would come I, he was out like one of like, my favorite comics. I would like to hit both sides. I try to in my videos hit both sides. Smart. That's why I make fun of like the conservative people that go to Burning Man that like fucking LARP as hippies and run around <laughs> with fucking you know and then go back to their banking jobs and design missiles, and then I like <laughs> I also. You know, shit on liberals who like, uh, you know, they think that Bill and Hillary Clinton are like a cuddly old couple, you know, and these are like vicious operators, just like the Bushes, sure. just like anybody at that fucking level. <laughs> yeah. You know? I love that. And I, I also think that like, I don't think I've shared this on this podcast, but one of my favorite heroes was Johnny Cash. Yeah. Uh, and what I, what I love about Johnny Cash is they talked about walking the line. He was always talking about walking the yeah. line. But it's really playing both sides. It's just your perspective on it. Yeah. Because he liked both sides and he liked people of different walks of life. And he also hated people on both of those sides. Yeah. So that's why he walked the line. He had his own country music hour on, on network television. Yeah. But then he would invite like Bob Dylan on. Yeah. And the good old boys are going, this fucking pussy yeah. ass liberal, you're at your so I think up? that like that political divide is fake sure. because you go out to dinner and nobody's like, you go out and you meet people. Nobody's a Republican or a Democrat when you're sitting next to them. It's hard to hate up close. Right. So the reality is I think that divide is just manufactured. I think so too. Uh, yeah. I really, I, I've never met somebody and I'm like, some people are a little annoying. Like I met. Me and Ari Shafir went to Jordan Peterson. He's, he's a very smart guy. Rogan has him on all the time. I we, love Jordan B. Peterson. So we went to Jordan Peterson's lecture. But again, me and Ari get bored. We don't give a shit, right? Because like, we're it's not for us. It's mm-hmm. for whoever it's for. It's not for us. And there's a lot of valuable things he's saying. But me and Ari just getting bored. Ari Shafir? Yeah. Oh, and we're, we're, we're sitting there. And then uh, you know, I go in the back and I meet like Ben Shapiro's sister and her husband are there. And- I'm like, where are you going to move to Florida? And they're like, the guy's like, somewhere where they won't take my guns. I'm like, okay, so we're doing this. I'm like, so we can't just have a regular conversation without injecting this. And yeah, yeah, you know, it becomes its own version of hack. Like its own, they have their own. It's just like enough, dude. It's none of it's interesting. Sure. Like none of it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think Jordan actually talks about this sometimes. Like when I like talk to like a feminist, he's like, I feel like I know everything you're going to say to me. Which right. that makes it uninteresting because I know fun. exactly, I know all your thoughts. And for me, that makes you so boring to me. <laughs> no, the only people that I'm like, I'm even, I'll listen to spiritual people, even though they're like, a lot of them are full of shit only because it's different. Mm-hmm. Like it's interesting. Like people that are like manifesting reality and all that bullshit. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give them a little bit of the time of day now when I never used to, because politics has drowned out everything else where some fucking person who's just you know drinking ayahuasca every day is now more interesting yeah, than me. Absolutely. you know what i mean than, than somebody who's just screaming about trump have you ever listened to a uh, wayne dyer 
Yeah, that's I like listen, my guy. I listen to a little bit of well, Wayne Dyer. He's an interesting guy. I shit on Gary Vaynerchuk a lot, so I will okay. say that. I, I don't know who that is. He's like oh, the oh, Gary, Gary V. v. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I, I make fun of Gary V a lot because he he says nonsense. Like none of it's specific, <laughs> none of it's real. It's all fake, <laughs> and it's it. No successful entrepreneurs ever needed to hear grind. No one's ever needed to hear the word right. hustle. <laughs> Um, he's like, if you could say it, you could do it. But I suggest you do both. It's like, do what? Do what, Gary? What's next? You're telling people to do it? Stupid. He'll tweet like, kindness is delicious. And I'm like, oh, we deserve everything we get as a country. Um, but I love, I would listen to people like, you know, I'd listen to like uh, sales trainers. I'd listen to people like, you know, whether it's Dale Carnegie or whatever, like people that specific things were like, when you're selling somebody, here's what's going to happen. Here's what you should do. Sure. Da, 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 da. But this generic, you know, uh, horse shit telling everyone they're going to be an entrepreneur. No, you're not. I know. And most they're, people aren't made for that. They're, they're not, not made for yeah. that. It denies fundamental, most people denies are. fundamental reality, uh, human nature. Jim Rohn was real specific when he would do his like motivational yeah, stuff. Dude, as long as you're specific. Yeah. He but, would be like, keep a journal about everyone you meet. Yeah. So like, if I, like for today, well, this would be easy because there's a recording of it, but let's say we just went to lunch. Yeah. Like afterwards, just like use some notes in your phone. I think he would say today, but back in the day he would say, keep like a specific journal. Right. Uh, and just say, you know, Tim's hanging out with so-and-so and, -so, and right. he's working with so-and-so and, -so, and this is what he's uh, working on. And this is what he just recently had a meeting with right. this network. Yeah. And so then the next time you see it, say, hey, so whatever happened with that? Just because it's nice to keep a little yeah, absolutely. information about somebody. I, he goes, and that's I what every no president does. I have problem with those guys. I just kind of think that. Gary V tends to be this, and he's the biggest one of them. So I totally understand. I'm wearing his shoes, by the way, because a fan sent me his sneakers. Hilarious. A fan sent me Gary V sneakers to the PO box we have, and it was kind of funny. But um, and I said I wear them for a few weeks. Um, they're not bad shoes, but again, I just think that like we got to go back to individual. We're, we think as a collective, right? And social media breeds that type of conformity where everybody. I think you got to go back to being an individual and going, "What is right for me is not right for the next person." Hundred percent. My route to money is not their route to money. That guy's advice may be applicable on some level, but the reality is, I gotta. I mean, that murder trial, all this shit that got me into comedy, that got me into my thing. None of that was out of a book. None of it was. And I'm not saying you have to be a 13 year old cocaine addict, uh, but I, you know. All of the things when I look back, the things that tilted my life in these directions, I don't know how much I planned them. I was just there and open to them happening. So I think people get hyper focused on like I'm going to plan, sure, and here's what's going to happen. And I think you loop because then you become closed because you're like, well, I'm going to plan and it's going to go A, B, C, and then it's like, well, no, be open to whatever's tilting you in one direction or another, and that could be the best thing that ever happened. You don't even know it. I think that yeah, I I agree with that one thousand percent. But also, I feel like I kind of came to that conclusion a real long time ago when one of my heroes is saying. You know, drinking's never helped anyone, and it's never done anything good for anything. And then another one of my heroes is going like, "No, nah, I need a drink every night when I write creatively and like right. when who I do." Are those two, who are those two? Well, sessions? for example, yeah. um, Ricky Gervais is okay. like a, a big drinker, and he's right. like that's how he, you know, lives. Right. And he he's he's famously had the same girlfriend forever, and he has right. no kids, and he's right. proud to not have kids. Right. However, but his Jordan, career that's Jordan, the type of guy. Where you get to that level, it's like, oh, I, you can almost understand how that career mm -hmm. could fill the void. Sure. Because it's a huge career. Absolutely. And that's a rare case. Well, and Jordan Peterson is always like talking about like, no, like it's have a responsibility. Kids. You have a family, you have kids and, yeah. and sure it's hard. And what's wrong with being with it being hard? Right. And alcohol, you it's not serving you and you've got to get rid of it. And it's like this whole, and you kind of got to say, well, what's right for me? Like, where are these? Because yeah. if I just keep, if I pick one hero and they just do all the things they did, that's not the same lab. Like that guy's a different life than me. Is a different right. lifestyle. He grew yeah. up different. He's different thoughts. Yeah. And so you just got to start thinking for yourself instead of regurgitating what other people have said. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. But it's a tricky conclusion to come to, because yeah, with social media and with television, with everything going, oh, you think like me. In fact, I had one time uh, I was kicked into my parents' house. I was like seventeen years old, I was living in, like this frat house in University of Washington, uh, with my young life leaders. And one of the one of the kids in the house is older than me, so I thought these older guys were so cool. Like I never had brothers, and it was like fun yeah. to like yeah. wrestle and like right. do, do guy yeah. shit yeah, yeah, or whatever yeah. that means. And um, he he goes. I said, I don't even know the difference between Democrat and Republican. And he said, listen to this. He goes, well, if anyone asks, just say you're Republican. And I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, just say that. And I go, but I don't even know what it is. I just told you I don't know what it is. He goes, I know, but you are. 
So just tell them. Right, yeah. And so then for like a few weeks, I was like telling me, like, I think I'm a Republican. And the people were like, what? Because it's Seattle, which is like, that's right, like yeah. a crazy thing to claim. Right. Uh, but it's like. What a stupid place, Seattle. Right. What a stupid, <laughs> what a stupid and pointless place. It can be. Yeah, no, I'm, not I'm joking. Wrong. I'm joking. It I mean, can it's just, be. Portland and all of that far left, like hyper left, like yeah. annoying. It can like be obnoxious. Just, you know, we grew oh, up you're white and made a burrito, yeah. and now your food truck is yeah. it's like I. You I, bought an old hat from the vintage store, so you think you're more interesting than other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. a I'm yeah. a gay woman, so you're not allowed to disagree with anything I say. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that, that's that's why. Do you are you close to your parents now? Uh, we're fine. Yeah. 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 It's it's a uh, it's. I've kind of get, gotten over that guilt. I treat my parents like religion. Like it's, you know. It, sisters, it's, brothers, it's no, thing. sister, one sister. Uh, I have two sisters. Two sisters. Yeah, yeah. and one of them's gone. And then uh, and then mom and dad, you're like holidays and stuff? Nope, I don't even do that. I didn't bother that. I treat it like like I'm done with that guilt. I don't hate yeah. them or anything. I don't resent them. It's a thing. Like it's yeah. kind of like they're the church. Like I, it's a thing. Were they religious? No. Okay. Yeah. But like, just for me, like, I like, I'd rather be around people I really love. And I'm yeah, going to spend yeah. every second of my life being around people I love. That's smart. I got great friends. Dude, I, have a great I, I just did an episode of my podcast called Cancel Your Family. Yeah. And I, I'm telling people. If it's not serving you. It's so, or if it is. It's so, <laughs> I, I tell people all the time, it's so easy to cancel a celebrity you disagree with. Cancel your, your mother and father. Cancel your sisters and brothers. Cancel your friends. If, obviously, if they're not. You know the right. You know, yeah, the yeah. guilt, the shame, the yeah. the pressure, yeah, the, all that stuff. Man. I agree with that a thousand percent. And I spend my holidays with people who um, I consider my new parents. Like right. they love me, and they like they're like so excited. Like months before Christmas, they're like, "Hey, you gonna come to Christmas, bud?" Oh yeah, that's like, awesome. And that makes me feel really good inside. I mean, yeah. Like usually it's like the week before Christmas, right. I might get an email from my mom, like, "Not sure what we're doing. If you're right. planning on flying up, it's like, oh, that sounded beautiful. Right. No, it's like I'd rather spend it with people who, and even if like a friend says, "Hey, I know you probably aren't going home for Thanksgiving. Yeah, you want to hang out in L. A. Right. Like yeah. that to me is way more meaningful. Yeah, and those are people I want to surround myself with. Yeah, hundred percent. I yeah. agree. Yeah, I agree. I always used to try to get out of family holidays by volunteering at a soup kitchen. Oh, yeah. But there are so many guilty liberals in New York that they all line up and they so volunteer. So they get a like photo for their year. Instagram bragging exactly. that they did it. So I could never get in, and I was so angry at that. So I had to go with my family. Right. You know, and they don't even care anymore. My stepmother makes, you know, she gets supermarket catered food. People eat it in sweatpants. It's like a methadone clinic. <laughs> and I just don't connect with that anymore. They did the hokey pokey last time. And I was just like, you know oh. what? I really was meant to be very wealthy. And I was meant to be around very stoic and cold, successful people. And that <laughs> didn't happen. And that's a, tra it's a great tragedy in my life. <laughs> the term is like trans class. Trans I'm trans class. I identify with the rich. Right. And uh, to be born in the lower middle class, just just when some, when you are trans class, when you're living in the body of someone who is a legacy <laughs> at Harvard and has a yacht, uh, is very tough. It's a very hard thing yeah. for yeah. me. It's very hard. But yeah. I try to do it. You know, I talk to people at the party and you know, the family party. Oh, you're a t oh, you're a teacher. He's always not. And you pat yourself on the back for going to it, but then when yeah. you get there, you go, "Why am I here?" Well, you know what it is. I just don't connect with a lot of them anymore. And it's not, I don't think anything's wrong with it. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm better and I'm not saying that, uh, whatever. I just think that, man, there are, there are like every friendship has a golden age. Sure. And I think there's a golden age of, you know, uh, any relationship where you're like, we just don't, we're not connected as much anymore. Sure. And that's just the way it is. And I think forcing that's kind of the wrong way to do it. Yeah, it's like a season mm. kind of. Like you're like, yeah. oh, that was fine for that Appreciate time. what it was. Some of the best friends of my life, I'll never be as close with again as I was, but I love and respect them and I, I will see them and visit them and whatever. But you had that golden age of like, oh, we were really tight senior year of high school or whatever, the, the first year of college. When you didn't have a wife and kids. Yeah, and when I wasn't, move. you know, uh, with my, you know, spending so much time in my fucking career and it's like, but this is where I have to be. And this is, you know, as Jordan Peterson said, like we're beasts of burden. Sure. So you got to, whatever that thing is, it's, you got to kind of figure, find that thing and, and, and do that thing. Unless, you know, who knows where you'll end up. Yeah. That's fascinating. You're a fascinating man, Tim Dillon. Well, uh, I hope you never move back to New York. Then you're I hope always so. just right I in so. Hollywood where yeah. we can find you. I hope that's, so. That's my hope. Selfishly, of yeah, course. Well, of course. Well, I appreciate I appreciate you having me on, dude. Thanks a lot. I got one more question for you before yeah. you go anywhere. Yeah. 
What happens when we die? Interesting question. Um, I hope we are all kind of taken to a suburban mall. <laughs> Like, you know, like, uh, but it was when it was good, <laughs> you know, like in the late nineties or mid nineties when it was still kind of, I mean, the eighties were really the best and it just smells like, you know, cinnamon and yeah. And it's just everything you buy, you can eat and you're just in a hyper capitalist paradise with no consequences and the emptiness you would feel isn't there. You just, everything, I, I hope it's the exact opposite of what everyone thinks it is, which is spiritual fulfillment and enlightenment. I hope it's the exact opposite. I hope it's just consumption, disgusting consumption. And that's what it is. But we'll see. <laughs> I love the, but we'll see after what happens when we die. Yeah. <laughs> you know how many times I've asked that question and people just blankly like stare? Like kind of off. Like I imagine a lot people... of the people you have on here are very stupid. Well, that's yeah, probably I'm, true. I'm, yeah. it's a joke. However, okay. <laughs> I don't think many people are asked that question. You know, no what one saying? asks it ever. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of uh, they're in their mind. They go, "Oh shit, I haven't thought about this since I was <laughs> right. like a kid, and I had to pick a church or yeah. faith." Where can you ever get like him? a real cool guy who's like, "We're already dead." <laughs> yeah, not <laughs> yet. I ever get that guy? That guy's nah. coming. Yeah, Actually, guess... we're already dead. It's like. I okay. wish I'd have asked it when I had Jeremy Piven on last year. Like yeah. a, we had him on so long ago, but like I imagine his answer would be some sort of weird theater shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what was the other thing? You oh, said I was gonna about? say, yeah. what can people find? Like what's uh, the, Tim J Dylan D I L L O N on Instagram? Tim J Dylan on Instagram. Tim J Dylan, same handle on Twitter. Uh, Tim Dylan Comedy dot com for any live dates. I'm gonna be. Stress Factory in New Jersey. I'm going to be at Go Bananas in Cincinnati. I'm going to, you know, something in Edmonton. I'm going to House of Comedy. In, you know, yeah. it's all on the website. The website's being updated. And But I also put it on social media and everything. How great is the Stress Factory? If any brand. Love that, it. I it's love a that look, place. It's a great club. Yeah. I was I've, so I've, mad I'm about that lucky. Pete Davidson thing. Because I was like, you know how Vinny uh, is. He goes up yeah. there, he talks some shit. Like, he does it for me. Yeah. He'll talk shit for like... 10 minutes sometimes about me before I I mean, go. I think at a certain it. level of money, you have to not be sensitive anymore. Right. At a certain level of money, you just have to not care about anything. It's Vinny Brand. He's going to talk yeah. some shit. That's comedy. Right. It's what it is. He's being silly. He's busting your balls. That makes him feel closer to the, the act. Yeah, and, yeah, know, yeah. Like, that's big part. Like, that's what... You think Pat Patrice would have went up there and just viscerated Vinny back. Right. He wouldn't have yeah. left. Yeah. Anyways, that's a good club. Yeah, I'm uh, And psyched. you said you're doing about two weekends a month now? Yeah, two to three. Nice. You know, which is good. Yeah. It's about where I want to stay. I love the road. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I like it. I, I also like, I like LA too, though. I like a home base and I love New York and I'm in New York a lot. So I'll pro I probably do close to, a, you know, four or five days every month and a half or two months in New York. How often, this is just a personal question and it's just for my own yeah, yeah. curiosity. So like sometimes you'll wake up and you'll just text like Big J, like, what are you doing today? You want to get lunch? Yeah. And then he's yeah, like, Yeah, that's sure. New York. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you text. You wait. LA people make plans. It's a big deal. I don't make any plans. But uh, also, like, when I was yeah. in New York, I didn't know how to, like, you know, all those comics, they weren't really, it wasn't like kind of kicking it with each other. It didn't feel like when I well, was. Well, you there. know what it was? You weren't there long. Right. That's really what it is. You were not there long. And I feel like the longer you were there, that stuff would have just organically happened. Yeah. They would always be like, hey, we're all going to therapy later. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, like, like I guess I got invited to box a few times. Like, I'm not going to go boxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, well, you, why don't you want to go boxing? I was like, I don't do that shit. Who's inviting you to box? Um, I'm trying to remember. At the time, it was Sergio like Chicago. Schumer and like Nicky Amy Glazer. Schumer was boxing? They would like do boxing shit. Well, maybe you should have done that. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. Oh, that that's who you want to hang out with? Schumer and Nicky? Well, it's not who I was uh, wanting to hang out with. I love Nikki, but Nikki was like the only one that hung out with me. Nikki's like. great. Uh, yeah, man. All that, but I'm also good being alone. Like I yeah. have friends, but I'm also good being alone. I'm good at being alone. I think comedy, you got to be alone and like notice stuff. But I have friends, and I'm I'm around people a lot. Yeah. And New York, I'm around people a lot more. L.A. to me is a little more lonely than New York because really? it's oh yeah. But I'm also you You're know new, yeah. I'm new, and a lot of my friends are very successful and have a lot going on, and they're not as available. Yeah, you text Joe Rogan. He's like, I've got 75 things today. He's got three kids and three jobs. Talk about a guy that talks about grinding, though. 
Yeah, but he grinds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, he does it. He does a lot more of it than he talks about, That's which is true. why people relate to it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Well, you're the best. Thanks, I love buddy. You, man. Thanks for being Thanks on. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks, bud. Friendship. Now that is how you do an episode. Uh, that was Tim Dillon. Follow him at Tim Dillon on all of his uh, socials. You won't regret it. his Twitter is one of my favorite things in the world. Um, if you guys want to watch this episode, go to patreon.com backslash Jeff Die. You can watch this and get free comedy club tickets to come see me wherever I am at. Um, yeah, you guys have been fantastic. I love you. Go to jeffdie.com for all of my calendar dates. And, um, and yeah, I will be at the, I don't know. Just go to jeffdie.com. I don't really remember. Peace.